Yesterday morning, we heard about this guy named Bob from 10 or 12 different people. You got to visit Bob. He's the guy in town. And so we're on our way there right now. Uh, we're told that Bob has a, a fairly huge collection of original cars, unrestored, which is intriguing to me. Car trailer, but that looks like the place it would be. It does. Tom Carter, Hi, you? Tom. No, no surprise which house he lived in. <laughs> uh, there's a, a trail load of Model A, I guess, parts, leftovers, leftover parts, and I guess we have one car here. Now, you, this is, I think, a significant car, but tell me why. Okay, it, it's a very early Model A made in December of 27. It's number 1031. And according to a friend that's really into these early Model A's, it's the second oldest one known with the original engine in it yet. Now, in, in the cult that follows these super early Model A's, the earlier you get, the scarcer they get, the more they're worth, the more they're sought after. By Montana standards, it's a rough body, okay, with plenty of rust, but it's significant. So almost every piece was different than one made six months later, say June of 28, okay. If I'm not mistaken, the early, early Model A's had, had a lot of T-type parts in Well, them. that rumor exists. I, I say no. Uh -huh. Here's a Model T part, your catch on the door, uh -huh. okay. Your lug nuts are Model T lug nuts. Um, other than that, right off, I, I can't think of much. When you get into this, you got to have a headlight bar that's got the Ford script on it. See, here's a choice that. one. It's got two Ford scripts. This is worth a couple hundred to the right nutcase like me. <laughs> okay. The radiator shell has what we call lacing on it, which, like the Model T, was laced. Oh, yeah. Up through February or so when they started riveting it on because it was cheaper or quicker. So that's a brand new, never used 1928. Yeah. I had two of them. I sold one on Man. eBay. But what I want to show you is the engine number pad. Star A1031. Star. Yes. So that's the number, the engine number matches the chassis number, which is is oh, right, right back there okay. under the body. Why Henry put it there, nobody knows. Yep. As an engineer, this fascinates me. The red, the, the 28 through February of 29 were all red steering wheels. And it's a hard rubber. This is a repop that comes off in your hands when it's wet. Shh. This one probably won't. The very first wheels had no grooves in here, mm -hmm. okay? And this is a fairly good representation of an early wheel. They all had the finger grips on the back. Yep. Now, as you imagine, that hard rubber coating on that steel core, when it would dry out and shrink, it would crack, and it would be ugly. So Ford soon after put a deep crack or groove right there so it would concentrate the stress and crack there where you couldn't see it as well. Okay. Um, this car needs one without the groove, without the finger grooves. The headlight lenses in the first three months had the Ford script at the top. That's got a BB hole option. <laughs> and, and about January of 28, they put Ford script on the bottom. To find the originals are very difficult. Here's the later lens with the script at the bottom. Isn't that something? Now the rear fenders, I got to show you this. They're called beaver tail fenders. The typical Model A fender comes down all the way and is wider at the bottom. Heaven only knows why we got a two inch reduction in width, which they call the beaver tail. And that would be on the inside of the Yes. Wow. And I just bought a pair of these from a friend in Oregon. I don't have them here yet. You know, it, it's that stuff that sets you apart at a show. Okay, that's what makes this pile. Well, that's enough for now, I guess. Here, we'll move on to the good stuff. <laughs> You got a Tornado. I have, I have 26 Tornados. I like these, and if they're good cars, 
Like, smell this one. You know, it's been inside, still smells good inside. Oh, yeah. I like smelly cars. 26 Tornados. I'm sorry that this is covered up. This is what's left of a 1911 McFarlane. McFarlane started in 1910, and this one gave up its engine and transmission, radiator, brass for the war scrap drive. Oh, I wow. found this over by Dylan. I traded a guy a fiddle for it. <laughs> so I got some research done, and this is the oldest known McFarlane pile. The next newest one is an 18 or a 19. And what year is this? 11. So there's a nice old Tornado. Yeah, I bought this one in 1971 off the car lot in Great Falls no for kidding. 1100 bucks. What year is this, Bob? The 66, the first year of the Tornado front wheel drive, which was the first front drive domestic car since the 37 Cord. And no kidding, isn't that a wonderful stat? Bob told me that the 66 has had this recessed headlight and the 67's it was flush. Yeah, we you call these the, the frog headlights. I don't, I don't like the term, but... And then this has horizontal bars and the 67's had a checkerboard. So, did you paint this or is this no, original? No, this is original. Have you used it as no, a driver? No, no. You got it in 71 and parked it? Yeah. You were, re you were really ahead of the curve. No, I'm really crazy. That's what you need to say. <laughs> What's this color called? Dubonnet. Dubonnet, and it's got a similar color interior. Yeah, Dubonnet inside Carpeting. Now. Uh, dashboard, door panels. Is this for sale? Yeah. What do you want for that? Probably 20, something like that. But I need to fix the brakes. I need to make it run. Yeah. That way people know what they're getting. I mean, you bought this in 71. Yeah. It was five years old and yep. parked it. Yes. Wow. I've been trying to ignore this car because I don't want to take away okay. from that car, but here's a 300. Holy mackerel. 60, 300 F hardtop. I bought this from Mel Camp in Fertile, Minnesota that told me it wasn't too rusty. Well, maybe it wasn't too rusty for Minnesota Merle, but it's got the that's, right that's, engine. That's pretty rough rust down here. Yeah, they're unibody cars, and that other it's door, a oh, they're terrible. See, but it's got the, the bucket seats front and back and consoles front and back. That's what makes a 300. Mm -hmm. Now, can this car be restored? Well, anything can be given enough time and talent and money. But it's got the original High Horse 413. The rams and carbs are upstairs. Tornado number three. Okay. <laughs> Tornado number four. Dad bought this one new. That's an 83 diesel. New? Yes. So that was the diesel converted from gas engine. Well, that's what they say. That, that's kind of true, but not totally. Well, how, how many miles you got on this? It's got 190-something. And he got scared. Of, we blew a head gasket about halfway along the way and fixed that. But he had towels... Who's he? Dad. Aha. Uh -huh. To cover the interior. And he put this plastic on the rocket panels no here to protect that. Like when it was new? Yeah. Mm. And he never smoked, so it still smells good. The velvet looks like a nice The shape. worst thing that happened is the two-way antenna. But, it, that's uh, bolted? That's not a, a magnetic, is it? No, it's a hole through there. Uh, 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 so I can't do much about that. Oh, boy, you got some vintage stuff in here. There, and this is a 17 Model T Touring. The second year of the black radiator shell, the ugly one. And um, you'll probably never see another Model T with a fan shroud. That was used for two months in 1917 only. And of all the cars that needed a fan shroud, the Model T was one. Because there was thermosiphon cooling, cooling with no water pump. However, the way they adjust the fan belt, you can see it's hung on a pivot down there so it moves sideways. So a little bit of stretch in the fan belt, the fan would rub on the shroud, so they finally took them off. Uh, Model T spark coil. 1917 only, they used sawdust and resin to make these cases. They were typically wooden cases like yours. Now, these are all the goofy cases. Mm -hmm. These two were actually in the car when I got it. And here's the plate that was up on the front. See, the Montana 43 plate, they just put a tab oh, over yeah, there. Yeah, 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 very cool. It's got the original wool mat in the back seat. The top is tough shape. The wool mat on the floor? Yeah. No kidding. Huh. And under the seats, all the side curtains and the tool kit. So. Is that where they would have been stored? Yeah. I worked two summers to get $595 to buy this 31 Chevy Coupe. And the day I drove it from Great Falls to Geraldine, I went through Fort Benton and Grandma gave me that 56 Plymouth she bought new and never drove. My aunts drove it, it had about 15,000 miles. And she was disappointed I was driving this clunker, as she called it. Mom had to drive the Plymouth home. So, how old were you when you bought this? Probably 15. What'd you pay for it? 
$595. That's a 272 barrel V8 two speed power flight. It'll do 100 miles an hour on the level, that's all. You can't spin tire and get rubber unless you hit a gravel road and hit the pavement. So anyway, I'd found a 392 Hemi that I wanted to wedge into it, the Chrysler dealer in Denton had that sold it new. And my folks were scared to death. I'd either kill myself driving it, which I might have, or I'd come to college and fool with it instead of studying. So they gave me a thousand bucks toward a new 70 Cutlass, which I still have. That, is that original paint? Yes. Oh, man. Look at that. So an air cooled Franklin. Now, Franklin had all different problems trying to cool their engines. This is called a side draft engine. There's a Scirocco fan on the crankshaft, blows air up down here and then sideways through the individual blocks and cylinder heads. And this actually is supercharged. Franklin overexpanded in 29 because of the boom. They couldn't service the debt. The banks closed them in 34. So to try to help sales, they take air off the cooling duct and they blow it into the carburetor. Is that original paint on anything? Yeah. Wow. The fenders were redone. In the, let me pull these knobs here. And you'll see that trap door move there. I don't want this to slide into the next car. Is it? It's all right. Is that? Oh, yeah, right here. Okay. Well, now we're not supercharged. So we come to the hill, we're going to make it. That's the wastegate. Yeah, it really is. So. Jeez. You see these old cans here with the original... Uh, Stickers, on, I mean paint on there. Neats, Neats oil, Neats oil. So it's probably top cylinder lubrication. Yeah, it it goes is. With, yeah. Oh, so look, this is a heater on the floor. Hot, cold, Masco. This is amazing. I mean, look at this shade back here. It's like. I'm looking at this, you know, pretty fabric work here, and there's, there's a brocade pattern on the wind lace, I guess you'd call it. It says 81,000 miles. Hmm. So what's the story with this Saab? So when I got out of school, I bought this one from a friend, and it's, it's a pretty rare one because they retrofitted air conditioning at the port of entry. No kidding. Yeah. So I'm going to impress you with my uh, knowledge of, Crazy trivia, but unless that's a ripoff, that's a Berry Mini T. It is. I tracked the history. Under the purple paint is yellow. yellow gel coat. They never sold a kit. Louis Rivera told me they never sold a kit. They just had the demonstrator. So, and then you'll see another one. I got another Shh. yellow one. But another Berry Mini T. Yeah, I don't Jeez. like the copies. Have you driven this? Oh yeah. This is probably the worst car I own, and yet if I ever restore one, this would probably be one of the first ones I'd want to do. Yeah. That's a Packard piano over there. <laughs> I've noticed that script is almost identical to the Packard car script. The first Ford wow. battery, 1919. It's a wooden case with three individual glass cells. All, all I've got is the key. And that, is that engraved in there, Ford? It's stamped in there somehow, stamped, pressed yeah. into it, yeah. The Studebaker had these as a factory option. They're called wigwag taillights. Huh. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, you step on your, uh, your brake light, this comes on. There's a vacuum actuator that swings this back and forth like a railroad lantern. So Bob tells me there's a virtually new Corvette over there, but the only way to get over there is to go through this tornado. I guess it's the ultimate anti-theft device <laughs> because trying to steal the Corvette and get it to come through this interior would be a real tough job. So I'm gonna go through here. I see that the steering wheel has been removed to make this uh, passageway more, yeah, a little bit easier to handle. So. Uh, ah, it's like heaven on the other side. This must be what it's like when you die and you well, go go from purgatory into heaven or something. All right, so what's the story on this Corvette? Chevrolet introduced the Corvette convertible. And I went out to Danhoff Chevy west of Bozeman to see what it would cost, and it was like 36000 so I went away and forgot about it. Well, Chuck called me two weeks later and said, your car's going to be here in four days. I said, I never ordered one. He said, well, I ordered the one you would have ordered if you would have ordered one. So when it came in, I went out there. It was filthy, dirty from the car hauler. 
but it was still the prettiest thing I'd seen in years. So for $1,600 down and $585 a month for five years, I bought my first and last new Corvette. <laughs> so this is a, a, a manual gearbox five-speed? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's not a five-speed. It's They call it a four plus three. It's a Doug Nash oh, yeah. overdrive on a four-speed, I guess. So, I can't I can't see the, the odometer. How many miles you figure on? I think it's four thousand because I, I took it to uh, I drove it here locally a little bit and I took a friend to the Chrysler meet down in Reno and then came back and then it hasn't moved since. How long ago? Well that was in eighty seven. Thirty two years. Yeah. Wow. So we saw the Model A at your house. Now we've seen tornadoes, etc. here. How many other locations do you have? Well, the 32 Nash is out of town in a storage unit, the convertible sedan. The Brox is in Belgrade in a storage unit, the handmade 130 cubic inch straight eight. Um, I've got five more 20 by 40s at rental units here that have interesting stuff. I'm not sure we can hit them all, but let's give it a shot. This is the 12 Kissel car. It was bought new by a circuit court judge by the name of Clark in Virginia City, Montana. 1912 was the last year of right-hand drive, no electric start and acetylene headlights. So this car was virtually worthless when it was a couple years old because it was totally obsolete. When in 1938, the uh, hotel was on fire and they called the Hodges boys, Bill and Hank, at the Jumping Horse Ranch to come help fight the fire. So they got there. They looked across the street and through the window of the livery stable sits this red thing. Bill says, let's go get that fire truck. And they said, no, that's Judge Clark's old car. So after the fire was over, they saved the foundation is all, of course. And Bill paid $75 for this thing and drove it home at night on one flat tire. And then he went to the service. The folks wanted to scrap it, but somehow he convinced them not to. He also had about a 1908 Auburn Roadster, which they saved. And he came back, he went to school, got an engineering degree on the GI Bill, went to California, took it down there, went through a flood, and uh, had engine trouble. So he sold it to um, Gene Balcom, and he restored it. Now, I've got pictures of this in 1956, and it'd be worth twice today they hadn't touched it. Beautiful, original car. So this was an AACA winner, 1964. Yeah, that's oh. about the year it was restored. See there, it throws it out. That's a clutch brake there that rubs to slow it down. Without the clutch brake, you have a heck of a time shifting it. So that's to keep it slippage? It'll keep it soft. So what's your material meter? Leather, this is Neat's foot oil. If you get too much on and it slips, which I've never done, then you use Fuller's Earth to dry it out. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is you guys to push me out of here. i to push it back enough to rotate the uh, clutch cone. See, there it goes. Whoa, right there, right there. <clears throat> Here, the oil squishing. Okay, one more time, Tom. That's good. Okay. Now we're in business. And then I close the choke. I gotta get it out of here first. It's in neutral. And we close the choke. And we twist its tail twice. <laughs> So I wanted. Now we release the choke, and I got to turn the ignition on. 
then once it starts, I got a dash over here to tilt it to keep it running. So you'll know what I'm doing. Now we can put the windshield down if you really want a fresh air experience. It's, it's been a heck of a day. We've spent hours with Bob. Um, amazing how your interest is all over the map. Yes. I thank you for taking the day off. You're welcome. Happy hunting.